I tried to build a Star Trek style ship in Starfield. And I think I did alright. What do you reckon? Ever since we learned there was a fairly comprehensive ship modification and building tool in Starfield that was based on sort of snapping together pre-made modules, my very first nerd impulse was to try and make something that emulated a Starfleet style ship, one of my favourite ship design aesthetics in all of sci-fi. I was hardly alone, of course. Just about every sci-fi nerd immediately started thinking about their favorite ships and if they could emulate its style and silhouette in the Starfield shipbuilder. Pop a comment in the down below what you thought of trying to make first. I've seen lots of people wanting to make things like the Galactica, the Serenity, X-Wings, the Millennium Falcon, the Swordfish... Hello again, I am Blunty. Thank you to everyone out there who's left a comment, thumbed and belled and whatnot. But my first instinct when it came to Starfleet style ships was to try making the Defiant. For one, I, like many Trek nerds, love that little ship. Little. Secondly, its Starfleet atypical, unusually flat profile seemed it'd make life a bit easier when working within the limitations of Starfield's shipbuilding system and the parts we had access to. For example, diagonal pylons for mounting engines on are just not a thing in Starfield. At least not until the modders get here. So one of the limitations I had to face was horizontally mounted nacelles. The other limitation is the engines can't be higher than the hull because I need a docking port and the docking port needs to be, well, higher than the engines. Otherwise, the system doesn't work. So that was also a disappointment. But in any case, the Defiant was my backup plan in case I couldn't get away with something a little more iconically Starfleet. What I really wanted to go for was a more classic design first, something that, at least at first glance, really suggested Star Trek. It had the silhouette of something from Starfleet. And then I obtained a ship called the Star Eagle. And even better, it's a ship you can get for free in the game. Well, not for free free, you gotta put in some work to earn it. But it does get gifted to you. To get the Star Eagle ship, you'll need to complete the quest line to become a fully fledged ranger in the Free Star Rangers faction. It's a faction quest that you can start following quite early on in the game, actually. Basically, as soon as you get to Aquila City, that Wild West inspired planet, and you start it by solving the bank robbery you'll find as soon as you enter the town for the first time. And once you complete the fairly extensive quest line, actually, it's going to take you a little time. It's also worth doing in its own rights because it is a very fun quest with lots of interesting stuff going on. But along with your Ranger badge you get when you complete it and earn your Ranger status, you'll also get a weapon, which is a pretty interesting weapon, and the ship. And it was this ship that was my starting point for my Starfleet ship. It already had engine pods on extensions, chonky extensions, but nonetheless, it seemed like a decent place to start. Because in Starfield, you can't actually build a ship from scratch. You have to modify an existing ship. I mean, you can tear that ship down to its nothing and then build it back up again, but for some reason, you can't start from scratch. I wound up recycling a lot of the existing parts, but moved them around, obviously, deleted some of the bulk of the habitation modules I didn't want, and added some new stuff along the way. And in the end, I really like my first try at a Starfield ship. I think it sells it. And what's more, all of this was done without investing any extra perk points into the ship building specialities. So anybody should be able to do this, no matter what your character build. Which is important, really, because several of the pre-installed parts on this ship are indeed high-rank parts that I don't have access to in the ship builder ordinarily right now. So this ship is significantly better than what I could have made from scratch. So let's go over the parts so you can use what I did to either copycat me if you like, or just use what I did as a starting place for your own experiments in Starfleet style ships. Alrighty, let's pop into the ship builder so I can show you what's going on and what parts go where on this thing. As you can see, uh, it still retains the Star Eagle name. I'm going to change that to something. If you got any suggestions for some Starfleet kind of cool uh, names, leave them in the down below. I'm still making up my mind what I want to change this name to. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, pop into the ship builder. And we'll have a look. So, oh, 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 sorry. I'm using actually. You know what? Let me let me switch to the mouse and keyboard. <laughs> I was using controller for the um 
for the for the, the flyby shots and stuff like that because it's easy to get smoother camera movement. But the ship builder is actually a little bit easier with the mouse and keyboard, or at least a little bit faster. So uh, the cockpit there is the Viking CP220 cockpit that came standard on the uh, existing ship as well. As did these cowlings on the side here that I've used to sort of get the saucer-ish shape to the front of the ship. Uh, there are no properly round parts that I've found yet, at least not that I've access to, so uh, we have a limitation there. So yeah, the kind of ship profile I've wound up with here is something a little bit closer to uh, the Intrepid class, uh, Voyager in other words, or the Inkry class, which I think we saw in uh, Star Trek Picard. Kind of a slightly flatter um, kind of design with a more sort of angular saucer section kind of deal going on. So not pure, pure classic, classic Trek, but a little more classic than, say, the Defiant, which was kind of the goal here. Again, we've got some limitations. The, the ship docker has to be at the top of the ship. I did have these pylons sort of up higher. I still had to have them horizontal because there are no diagonal pylon parts. Uh, but I did have them a little bit higher before. But uh, it turns out, yeah, this has to be at the extreme edge of a ship. And just um, because of the way they stuck out here, I couldn't put the docker on the... Um, the side of the dish basically um, I don't know if I've got any bottom parts but I couldn't find any I had access to so it had to go on the top which means that uh, that part of the hull had to be the tallest part of the ship so that was one of the limitations I hit we've got um, some companion ways there's three across the middle here I tried a few different modules for the middle part of the saucer section these ones were the sort of most appropriate ones I don't like their internals they're kind of boring as uh, ship components but they're fine what little shield generator up here, that was another stock part from the original ship. I like it because it's a little dome. A lot of the shield generations sort of stand proud from the ship. Little troidal rings and stuff like that, but a little dome in the middle of the saucer section is very, very Star Trek. Uh, of course, I've put portholes uh, everywhere so you can see out of the ship because, again, Starfleet ships have a lot of windows on them, so everywhere had a blank spot that had, it had nothing attached. Portal, portal, portal. Which also means when you're in space, when you walk around your ship, you can see out into space, which is kind of cool. Right, uh, got a couple of cargo containers on either side of the back end of the uh, dish. Uh, these were stock parts. They're a thousand cargo each, which is really nice, because if you're like me, you struggle with infantry management in these damn games. Um, and these landing gears, I think they were stock parts as well. I can't remember. I tried so many different variations of landing gear. Forgive me if I got it wrong. Um, another stock part on the ship underneath the source section here are the suppressors. These are the non-lethal knock out your enemy ship's engine so you can board them kind of deal. I thought that was very, very Starfleet, so I kept those. don't like how they stand proud, but, you know, hidden underneath the dish, they're not so bad. Uh, so, moving back, I think most of the body modules back here are stock ones that came with the ship. There were three layers originally, so I got rid of a big layer across the top, basically, to slim it down a bit, make it look a little less chunky. Uh, oh, that landing bay, I think that's stock as well. Ship bed landing bay that was that that came with the original ship. So yeah, we've got the engineering and captain's quarters, which I think I moved actually. That used to be up the top here, um, and a storeroom behind that. Behind that, the reactor back there, which is tucked away in the middle of the ship. There, that's the uh, Tokamak X three hundred reactor. That again is a stock part, a much more powerful reactor than I could currently install with my ship building skills the way they are. And the grav drive, again, the stock part, as well as the cowling at the back here to sort of taper off, not quite nicely. The landing parts at the back here, these are also stock parts, and I think they're even in their stock position. I don't think I moved those. Well, I did move them around, but I moved them back eventually. Right, so the pylons, uh, there were extra bits that came with the pylons originally. I uh, got rid of a couple of extra bits just to slim them down to a more Starfleety, slender pylon thing going on there. And the pods themselves, or the nacelles, the engine pods basically, those are basically stock. Um, although, no, wait, I think they originally had landing gear underneath. So I replaced the landing gear with a Demos hole A part here to try and, because uh, we don't want the landing gear coming off the pods because that's not very Star trek -y. So I had to replace it with something appropriate of size and shape. So that was that. And the little uh, tanks back here, these are the helium tanks. Um, I tried so many different variations of healing tanks. I did have them in the body of the ship, sort of under here and tucked away all the way under here and stuff like that. Nothing quite looked right because you need the you need the neck of the ship to be slender, to be Star trek -y, So uh, nothing really worked. I tried them in all different positions. I tried them up here on the dish and stuff, but no, that didn't work. So I eventually just put them at the end of the nacelles, basically, which, um, to, be, to be frank with you, I'm not 
I'm not perfectly happy with because they sort of ruin the tubular lines of what the nacelles should be. But, you know, from most angles, they look like they belong. That'll do until I find another better option that I can uh, swap in somehow, but uh, not so bad. Um... So yeah, the weapons I think are all stock as well. I did move them around. We've got the pulse lasers and the missile launcher. Uh, those are very powerful lasers, by the way. Much more powerful than I can install by stock. So again, starting with that good ship, uh, there are a lot of recycled parts in this ship that I don't have access to if I had to build the ship from you know nothing. So yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it. If you start from the same ship I did, you'll be able to get here reasonably easily and relatively cheaply too, because I didn't actually add that many expensive parts. Most of it was taking away parts or replacing existing parts with other more appropriate ones, like the um, the big uh, the big uh, habitation modules I replaced. The big three of them across the top there, I replaced some of these little ones. So I didn't actually keep track of how much I wound up spending, because I spent like three and a half hours fiddling on this ship, and I completely lost track of what I was doing. I did wish I recorded it so I could do a big time lapse of it, because it was an extensive process of uh, trial and error and fiddling and moving things about and back and forth and all that sort of stuff. Um, and then, of course, I gave the whole thing a uh, base white uh, coat of paint with some splashes of two different tones of grey, very, very star fleeting, very, very classic sci-fi shippy. And with a few splashes of red as well. I think I'm going to actually tone down the red on the pylons here. That's a little bit bright. I think I screwed up there. Um, probably bring this red down a bit too. But yeah, Star Starfleet ships have a variety of different color splashes depending on their uh, purpose in the fleet and you know which uh, which show you're looking at and everything. But I went with red because it feels it feels fairly appropriate. But again, yeah, I think the, the pylon one there is just a bit bright. So I'm going to bring that down again. So there you go. I don't know what to call this ship yet. And uh, okay, I'll come up with something. Ooh, oh, oh, you know what I just noticed? <laughs> Those aren't attached to the same point. Those are off axis. Oh, dear. Um, oh, dear. Oh, dear. How did I not notice that? Well, let's just fix that up real quick. Chunk. Oh, excuse me. Behave yourself, shipbuilder. Chunk. Yeah, the um, positioning gets a little weird when you're doing it from a low angle, I've found. There we go. Now they're symmetrical. Damn it. Did you notice that in the flybys I filmed earlier? Probably. Well, it's fixed now. <laughs> I'm not going to refilm them because <laughs> I spent like 20 minutes doing some of those. Yeah, as you can see from the uh, sort of silhouette profile of it, I don't know about you, but it seems to sing track to me, especially from sort of this three-quarter angle and the plan angle. Yeah, I don't know. What do you reckon? I reckon I did all right. For my first try, without any of the advanced shipbuilding skills or parts, just working with what I had, I think I did pretty good. What do you reckon? Come along over to Twitch to see me stream the game and have a nice chat and hang out if you like. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to the patrons. I am Blotty. I'll catch you next time.